to Channel 24. Today with me I have Dr. Max Arroyo and he's here to talk with us about peripheral vascular disease. Dr. Arroyo, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So what is peripheral vascular disease and how does it differ from something like uh, coronary artery disease? Actually, um, there is not a lot of difference. Uh, coronary artery disease and peripheral vascular disease are essentially the same thing, except that peripheral vascular disease occurs in the vessels that go outside of the heart. Uh, for instance, you can have plaque buildup of cholesterol in the arteries that go to the neck or the arteries that go to the, the legs. And um, it, it dis uh, diminishes the circulation to the legs or to whatever territory or tissue it is distributing. And when the artery becomes blocked enough, then you will have symptoms and uh, problems such as what you have when you have heart disease and uh, coronary disease. Okay, so if there's some kind of blockage in the, in the lower extremities, I mean, is that cholesterol? What is that blockage exactly? Yes, it's mostly cholesterol. The, the process by why this starts, um, it is cholesterol that builds up and it gets absorbed into the vessel wall. And then over time, this cholesterol gets calcified. And then the calcification makes this plaque or this artery very hard, almost hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, the buildup slowly progresses, and uh, eventually this blockage will reach 70% or more. And usually that's when you start seeing the symptoms of a, of a blockage or vascular disease in general. Okay, so what are the symptoms? What should we look for? Uh, as far as peripheral vascular disease, uh, the classic symptom we call it claudication, which means that the person will start walking and will get cramping or pain in the muscles while they walk and then as soon as they sit down or rest then the symptoms go away. That's usually the first symptom but not the only symptom. Um, many people don't have any symptoms at all and what they will notice is that their toenails become brittle or they lose the hair that goes uh, below the knee level. Uh, sometimes we mistake it for neuropathy and people people have um, resting pain at night and uh, that could be a sign for peripheral vascular disease as well. Uh, some people manifest the first time as uh, an ulcer or a wound or a sore in their toes or in their leg and uh, this ulcer will, will not heal and that could be also the first manifestation for peripheral vascular disease. It's really very broad which is why it's missed so much uh, these days. Okay, so if we start to see some of these symptoms, we should come and get checked out. What kind of uh, procedures are there to, I guess, uh, to counteract this disease? I mean, what, what can be done? Well, uh, the first thing is prevention. Prevention is the most important thing. Uh, we have noticed that the risk factors for peripheral vascular, peripheral vascular disease are diabetes, uh, smoking, uh, high blood pressure. There's a very strong correlation with coronary disease. So people that have diabetes, smoking, um, coronary disease, uh, these people sometimes need to get screened even without symptoms. And uh, we can modify these risk factors and, and help the progression of disease. Once you develop um, a blockage or a significant vascular disease, there are several things that we have. We have stents, which is the same thing that we use for the heart. We have balloons. And uh, there's a technology called atherectomy. And there's several, several different um, devices. Some of them are like a drill of, um, of a drill bit. And uh, this helps us go through the plaque and debulk the plaque before we use a balloon or a stent to open it up. And what we notice is that uh, this technology gives us more durable results when we use it. Uh, is there a point at which uh, that that procedure is not applicable? I mean, are there, is it in some cases, do you have to amputate? I mean? Yes. Um, our goal ultimately is to, to eliminate, uh, hopefully, most of the amputations, if not all the amputations. But uh, these procedures can be repeated multiple times to, to save a leg. We actually have a very, very uh, well developed program of, um, of limb salvage, that's what we call it, at, uh, at the hospital at St. Bernard's uh, Heart and Vascular. And, uh, Yes, sometimes the disease is so advanced that we have to do a uh, procedure, procedure multiple times, um, several times in the same patient over a period of months with ultimate purpose of, of saving um, this person's leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, is there anything else about the disease that you, you want to get out there, let people know about? Well, uh, what I was saying before, prevention is, is, is the key factor here. Uh, diabetics, uh, smokers, people with coronary disease in general, they are at very high risk and, uh, and unfortunately not everybody will have symptoms and uh, sometimes the first symptom is, is a dark foot or a blue foot or a black foot like we call it and uh, which is a, a very bad sign ominous for, for limb ischemia or, or 
uh, something that might need amputation pretty soon. So uh, I think people that have these risk factors I'm, uh, I mentioned, it's very important uh, to, to mention it to your family doctor or your cardiologist or your internal medicine physician so that you can get screened uh, for per peripheral vascular disease. The screening is actually very, very simple. It's uh, called ABI, mm -hmm. which stands for ankle to brachial index. And uh, simply, they put a blood pressure cuff in both arms and then they inflate blood pressure cuffs through the legs and what this helps me is detect the drop in pressure uh, through the legs. And if there is a drop in pressure through the legs, that is very suggestive of blockage in the, in the arteries and the legs. And that is the first step that helps us determine if this person is going to have disease early and we need to treat them early or just monitor them over a period of time. Well, Dr. Roy, I want to thank you so much for being here and talking to us about this disease. Guys, if you have any symptoms or you think you might have some symptoms, some things that might be headed in that direction, please go see your physician, like he says, and get it checked out. So thank you again for being here. Thanks very much. Guys, we'll see you next time on Channel 24.